Hey there, and welcome back to Eight Acre Homestead. If you guys are new, my name is Jennifer, and today I invite you to follow along as we go through our weekly reset, our grocery haul for this week, the things that we make in order to make our week a little bit easier, and the meals that we come up with and how we do it. Good morning. It's Sunday morning and we're just now getting done with breakfast. I'm going to flip you over. You guys can see what I have to look forward to this morning to clean up before I start deciding what it is that we're going to do for our weekly reset. This is what it looks like after Sunday breakfast. Everybody has eaten. Everybody is gone. So I need to put this stuff away. Dishes need to be put away. We'll go ahead and move on that shortly. And then over here, I have gone ahead and taken out everything that is in the refrigerator that I feel like needs to be used up because it's either half open, like these cheeses right here are already opened. Why we have two of them open, I don't know. Those need to be used up. And some other things that have been sitting in there that kind of need to be cooked. So this is how I come up with my kind of weekly meal plan is I'll go through my fridge, freezer and pantry and really try to look at what I can put together based off of the ingredients that are either half open or need to be used up or are going to expire. And then as I go along, I will try to make a mental note of what we have in our kind of at home grocery store store, so to speak, or stockpile. And then anything that's missing that I need to fill in with is what I add for my grocery list. So let's take a peek at what we have and we'll go from there. This right here is what I have to work with so far this morning. I'm looking, these guys I picked up earlier this week. So these four melons, because they were on sale on Friday, particularly only at our local Safeway. Um, so these were on sale. So this will be our fruit for this week in conjunction with what is left in our fridge, which when I take a peek, it looks like we still have some grapes are left here. We have some of our oranges left. And I believe the things over here, I need to clean my fridge out. These things over here are just some of the veggie things that we have left. So we do have some of these oranges or these cuties left, some grapes. And then I do have those melons here that we're going to go with. I'll see if I need to fill in anything there with stuff from the pantry, like any canned fruit, or if I need to get some of the additional fresh fruit for that. I do have a couple of bags right here that are each open. There's only a little bit left in this one and then this one's open as well. So I gotta use these up. I also need to use up this whipping cream. So I think the combination of those two are leaning towards maybe some type of an Alfredo dish of some sort or something with an Alfredo sauce. So whether we do chicken that way or whether we do pasta that way or the both combined, not sure we'll need to do that. I have some celery that needs to be used up, some carrots that need to be used up. These I got on sale. Again, at our local Safeway, they were 97 cents each, and I wanna get these used up this week too. So I think I'm gonna pair these with some crackers that I have in the pantry for a snack for the kids and maybe along with one of the fruits so that when they get home from school, they have something to munch on to hold them over until dinner. I have a half open, ba half, half open bag of tortillas that I need to use, and I'm also seeing over here, we have some shredded chicken that I did back in February that we used a little bit of this when we went to visit some friends this weekend and this is what was left over. So we have that and then that same friend that we went to go visit gave us these, it's like these cooked black beans that they made. They are super delicious, super wonderful. I think I'm gonna make like a, kind of like a Mexican themed black bean soup with this to go with salads for lunches. And that will be lunches for anybody and myself that wants to use them. I do have this can of corn that was used or that was opened, but not used. So I got to use this up. This was canned from our garden this year. So I think I'm going to throw that into the soup. And then if we pair this guy with these, then we'll do some kind of, whether we do like a chicken enchilada or we do like, something with the tortillas like a burrito or tacos or something like that i can use the rice here that we have as well to pair with that but i'm thinking because i have this open can right here of this coconut milk then i'm going to do like a coconut lime or a coconut rice and do maybe an asian inspired protein to go along with that 
Um, I do have some ricotta cheese in the back right here that is also half open or half used and it needs to be used up as well. So I'm going to do that probably in some type of a pasta. I know we always have in the freezer, we always have a meat that can go with that. I always have some kind of noodle along with that. So I think we'll do some kind of a, a lasagna or maybe a stuffed shell or some kind of casserole that is maybe like an inside out lasagna kind of a thing. Right here, I have some barbecue sauce that was homemade that we need to use up as well. My son requested that we do hamburgers this week with um, the elk burger that he got this year. So I think we're going to put this both in the meat itself, but then also as a, um, as a sauce for it. These carrots I'll use along with this in that soup. I do have some celery need to use up. So whether we use that as a snack or we use that in a meal, we're going to do that as well. And then the leftover bacon that we have right here, I might use that for the burgers, the barbecue burgers that we're going to do this week. Or if I feel ambitious enough, I might do like a candied bacon jam to go on the burgers. We'll see. But I already have to make the buns this week for that. So we'll see how ambitious I get on that. So based off of that, I'm going to go ahead and open the iPad so I can write my notes. And then this right here, I'll set aside just to write down anything that I'll need to get from the grocery store. So we're going to do a black bean soup with the carrots, the black beans, and the corn. So let me write that down. I'm going to say it's a black bean soup. So I'll write that there. And then we have the chicken with the tortillas. I actually have some cheese here too, but we'll do the chicken tortillas. So we'll do either burritos, tacos, or enchiladas. And then with the rice and the coconut here, we're going to do a coconut rice or coconut lime. So coconut, rice, and then I'm going to put a question mark after that because I don't know what protein I want to put with this yet. So I'll have to figure that one out. Um, back here we have the ricotta cheese. So I know I want to make some type of a lasagna style. So I'm just going to put lasagna down on that. Actually, I forgot to hit the enter button. So let me back that up. So lasagna, and then we have the barbecue sauce right here that my son wants to use for burgers. So we're going to do barbecue bacon burgers. And then I think the last thing we had was the whipping cream and the Parmesan cheese. So we'll do some kind of Alfredo. I'm just going to write Alfredo on there. I don't know if I want to do, I keep forgetting to hit that. I don't know if I want to do some kind of pasta or if I want to use that sauce in place of something like on a chicken as a sauce. Um, not sure about this one yet. I don't know if we're going to use this as a snack or if we're going to use that in a meal. I'll let you guys know what I decided to do on that one. Other than that, that's a good start for us to plan this week's meals and then I will do some fillers. I'm going to sit down and continue and I will do some fillers. I will write down on our sticky note what I need to get from the store and we'll kind of go from there. And then once I get that done, I will go get the groceries that I need as well as I need to do a kind of a restock, a reset for the kitchen. So I will need to make bread for the week that is usually in the bread maker back there. There's a bag in the way, but in the bread maker back there, we will do a loaf of white bread. And then I think I'm going to do some kind of um, attempt at doing a bagel. So let me write down. I know for sure that I'm going to need cream cheese, like flavored cream cheese. Actually, I take that back. Let's take a look at this really quick. I didn't mention this guy right here. And this is some raspberry um, jam that I had made previously and it's open so i need to use up what's in here if i take that raspberry jam and check and see if i have 
some cream cheese in the fridge, then we can just make some raspberry cream cheese because I want to attempt to do some bagels this week. So if I do bagels this week, we can do raspberry cream cheese with that. So I think I'll save myself a trip on that one. Well, I still got to go, but at least I don't have to buy that. So that's what we're going to get started with. And I will touch back with you guys when we do a reset on all the bread products that need to be made for this week. All right, we are back with the grocery haul for this week. This is it right here, the whole thing. There are a few impulse buy items that are in there that I was not planning on getting, but were either a good deal or I had one of my teenage daughters with me and she wanted to throw some extra stuff into the cart. Starting things off, we'll start over here. This is just some deli ham that I picked up. We don't typically buy deli ham, but I felt like that would probably be beneficial this week to use for sandwiches and to help get through the homemade bread that we have. This was an impulse buy. This is dried cheese tortellini. I want to try this out um, and see if the dry version versus what we typically get is much different. So I went into the bulk section and I got that. The asparagus will probably go with the um, coconut rice option. These were 98 cents a pound, so that was a really good price on those. We always get a whole bunch of bananas because I use them for banana bread. I use them for smoothies. We use them for fruit throughout the week, so that works well. The avocados and the tomatoes are going to go with our salsa verde to make our green enchiladas. I do make the sauce by hand, but I do like to put this inside mixed with the chicken because it gives it a little boost of flavor with that. The oranges were not planned either, but they were 48 cents. 48 cents a pound, and that's a really good price for our area. Each one of these tortillas were 98 cents a piece. I don't know if we were out, but at 98 cents a piece, this is great to put in the freezer and use for another time, and I don't have to hand make them, so that'll be nice and convenient. I went and picked up these sun-dried tomatoes because I want to add that to the Alfredo recipe that we talked about earlier and make more like a like a sun-dried tomato, Alfredo, marry me chicken kind of a thing. Top ramen, not my favorite. I do have teenagers that love to have this every so often. So we picked up these two because my daughter likes the uh, packets to make a salad dressing with. She doesn't actually eat the noodles on these ones, but we also did get a pack, like a large pack of the ramen noodles. I'm not super proud of that, but again, it's a quick teenager food that they grab every once in a while. Got two cucumbers to go with salads. I got a pack of greens to throw in smoothies. And then this was also considered an impulse buy, but it's been on my radar to pick up. I wanted to wait until I went to a bulk section to be able to buy it because I didn't want to buy the packaging at a typical store. So this is cake flour that I want to use for a future uh, dry pantry recipe mix to have on hand to use for future cakes and whatnot. So I wanted to make sure I got some cake flour. We'll go over that together later when I do that recipe. But my total for all of this today came out to $53 for this. Um, our protein, oh, I forgot this little guy. This little guy was also an impulse buy. This I've never seen before, but this is a little jar of honey, but it looks like it's a hot honey of some sort. Um, over here, you can see this other little tiny jar of honey that my husband has been going through. He um, is a big fan of our local honey that we buy here, which is what this has been used for. Um, but my daughter spotted this one when we were shopping and thought that dad might like to try and give this a shot and see how it tasted. So we went ahead and we picked that up. It wasn't super expensive and thought it was just kind of a neat thing to throw in there. But anywho, um, our proteins will come out of our freezer. Uh, we try to do our proteins. Um, we try to stock up on about a year's worth of protein at a time, if possible, that we either raise ourselves or we buy locally and put in the freezer. So I will just buy our or get our proteins from there. I didn't have to buy any this haul. Um, and we had some proteins that were left over in our fridge that you guys saw before. So I will keep moving on what it's like to stock up for the week as I move on to our breads. So before we get started with the bread that we make for this week, we had a little bit of a detour. I had one of my kiddos end up being sick and came down with something and I had a little bit of a derailing as well. So yesterday what I did is I took my Instapot and, or my Instant Pot and I put a whole turkey in there frozen as well as some of the um, 
have a bag of just kind of clippings and whatnot of like celery, onion, carrot peels, that type of stuff that I keep in my freezer for when I want to make broth. So I threw that in with some water, some salt, um, and those veggies to go ahead and make like a, a stock of some sort with the chicken already cooked. I didn't use it yesterday. It's just, I didn't have the energy or wasn't feeling well enough to actually make everything all together. I'm feeling a little bit better today, but I still have a kiddo that's under the weather. So I'm going to take this out of the fridge. I just put this in the fridge yesterday. I put it in my instant pot for about an hour, hour and 10 minutes or so. And I just let it cook. And then I took it out, let it sit on the counter for a minute and threw it in the refrigerator for last night. But today we're going to go ahead and put it into the pot right here, warm it back up and get to the point where we're going to strain it and then add some extra stuff to it so we can do some chicken soup today. I think that will be super beneficial both for myself and for my sick kiddo. Um, it's always good to have some bone broth when one isn't feeling well, so this will help out quite a bit. I will come over and do some celery, onion, garlic, carrots. I will put that all in to the pot as well. You can see me as we go along. This ended up being a great way for me to use up some of those veggies that I showed earlier in the video, the celery and the carrots in particular. Like I said, I always keep a bag in the freezer that I throw the odds and ends of either onion peels or when I peel my carrots like this, I like to grab that bag and throw all of that stuff in there. And that's what I use to make future uh, chicken stock with. So as I'm cutting up these vegetables, I will add all that to the bag and then the bag will go in the freezer and I will use it later at another time so that we're not wasting the food and it's being utilized again to make another chicken stock in the future. So here I'm just cutting up the vegetables and getting them ready to put into the pan. I am gonna wanna saute those and get them to the point where they will be added to the soup homemade bone broth is so great for you when you are not feeling well when you're sick when you're under the weather i myself have some tummy issues so this helps settle my tummy whenever i am not feeling well so to that i like to add onion i like to add carrots i like to add celery and i like to add some garlic i will finally chop that up as you see me doing in this part of the video and then i will add that to the pot to saute prior to throwing in my broth and my chicken and so forth this is what the bag looks like when i'm done cutting up all the veggies i will just close that up and then i will put that in the freezer to use in the future to my pot, I'm going to go ahead and add about two tablespoons of butter, and then I will throw in all of the veggies that I have chopped minus the garlic. Because that is so much smaller and minced, it doesn't take as long to cook as the bigger things like the carrots and the celery, so I will add those later. While that's sauteing, I go over to my bread maker. I will take out the insert and I will get started on prepping the white bread loaf that we're going to use for the wheat. So to my bread insert, I'm going to add about one and a third cup of water. And then I do about two tablespoons of milk. After that, I go and I grab my flour and I add to my mixture about four and a quarter cups of white flour. This is a recipe that came with my bread mixer. So you can use one that you find on the internet or you can use one that you can do by hand. You do not have to have a bread mixer in order to make bread. I do four tablespoons of sugar and about one tablespoon of salt. I will do two and a half tablespoons of butter and then I add about two and a half teaspoons of um, active yeast. I will throw that into my bread maker, hit the button that I need for it to get started, and then it does the rest of it for me. I don't have to do anything else after that. When the bread is done cooking, it will let me know. In the meantime, I'm going to come and stir the vegetables that have been cooking until they're to the point where they are done and ready to be added to the soup. So I will put them in a separate bowl, put them aside until I am ready to add that to the stock. Here I'm just putting everything that was in my instant pot from the night before into this pot so that it can start to kind of simmer and get warmed up. I'll break the chicken down as much as possible and then I will continue to add water until it covers the chicken and everything else inside there. 
I'll add some salt to taste to the stock just to give it some flavor. And then once that's had a chance to kind of heat through and break down, I will take out all the larger chunks of the chicken that's inside of there. I don't really worry about the smaller pieces. It's more the larger pieces at this point. And then I'll set that aside so that I can strain the remainder of it. I just grab a ladle that I have and I use a strainer inside of a bowl or a colander inside of a bowl. And then I just slowly add that until it's to the point where I feel like I can tip the actual pot and strain the rest of it. I'll go ahead and take the colander out, set it inside of my pot, and then take that over to the sink so that I can dump everything or set everything out. Then I will dump the rest of the stock back into the pot itself. And at that point is when I take the bowl and I start to go through the bigger pieces of chicken, adding in what I want to into the chicken soup itself. Now, the good thing about this is that although I cook an entire chicken, I don't actually use the whole chicken. I only use about half of it. At that point, I will go ahead and add the veggies that I sauteed already, and then I can decide what else I want to add to it, which at this point, I decided to go with potatoes. So I cut up potatoes and added that to the chicken soup as well. So I will go ahead and let that come to a boil, reduce the heat down, and then cover and let it simmer for until the about 20 minutes until the potatoes are cooked all the way through. I'll take the remainder of that chicken, I'll label a plastic bag or a Ziploc bag, and I will throw that chicken into the bag and set that in the freezer to use at a later date. Once the potatoes have kind of come to cook through, I will take what I have left in the freezer of some peas from last year's garden. I had about half of a container that needed to be used up, so I will add that to the soup as well. That will continue to cook while I have a chance to get started on my banana bread. Now my banana bread is something that I do very regularly because I love the fact that we can eat it right away or we can put it in the freezer for later. The recipe that I use for my banana bread, I will try to link in the description below, but this is a variation based off of that. So I do make a little bit of a modification, but basically it's just um, one and a half cups of all purpose flour. I double my batch. So all of these ingredients are gonna be doubled. Um, a teaspoon of baking soda, half a teaspoon of salt. And I mix that dry ingredients in the bowl first. And then I go to my mixer and I do half a cup of melted butter, one cup of white sugar. I add two eggs to that and then a teaspoon of vanilla extract. And once that all has a chance to mix up, I will add the dry ingredients to it. And then I will add about two bananas to the recipe as well. Again, I'm double batching mine. So this recipe is just for one loaf, but in this particular case, I was doing two. Once it's all done, I will take it off of the mixer and take a spatula to scrape down the sides and the bottom just to make sure everything is incorporated. And then at this point, I add half of a cup of sour cream to the mixture. I have some uh, almonds in my pantry that needed to be used up. So I went ahead and added about half a cup to each loaf which in this case would be a full cup because I was doubling the recipe. And then I will take my greased pans. I have two of them that I've already pre-greased and I'll divide the batter up evenly onto that. Once those have been divided up evenly, I will go ahead and take those and add them to the oven at about 350 degrees for about an hour. I figure since I still have some time before the bread is out of the oven and the other bread is out of the bread maker, I'll go ahead and get dinner together so that when I go to cook it later, it's not as much work. It's not so labor intensive. So it will be super easy. I have that chicken that's left over that I showed you earlier that needs to be used up. So I'm going to take that out of the freezer. You might hear my little guy that's here with me in the kitchen because he is walking around here in his little walker. And he is telling me all kinds of stories while he's here. So let me get that chicken out of the fridge. I'm going to scoot this back so we can see a little bit better. Here we go. So I've got these tortillas. I have the chicken that we're going to put in there. Let's get some taco seasoning, cream cheese, and we should have some salsa verde around here somewhere. That is not something that... I have stocked from the garden this year, so we're gonna be using a store-bought one, which is perfectly fine. I just gotta remember where I put it. So a jar of salsa verde, here we go. All right, 
So we're going to start by adding to this bowl. Can you still see? There we go. We're going to add to the bowl of this chicken that's been cooked in our instant pot previously, frozen. And then I took it out this weekend because we were going to a friend's house and I was making some food over there. I ended up not using all of it, which is fine because we will always use that up here. So to the chicken, I'm going to add some taco seasoning. This one's a homemade taco seasoning that we did together. So there is a video on that. Put some taco seasoning in there. So if you want to check that out, I will see if I can put it in the description box. And if not, it is on the channel. We are going to put in, if I can open the jar, a jar of salsa verde. So that's going to go in there. We are going to put some cream cheese in there as well. This is cream cheese that has been sitting out for about an hour. I took it out this morning. Actually, it's been longer than an hour for me because I took it out this morning knowing that I was going to use it later. One of the things that I love about this type of recipe and cooking is that you can use something that's been previously cooked and frozen. So it makes that you know, prep time or cook time, it really cuts it down to where you barely have to do anything. I almost consider this a dump and go because really I'm just dumping all the ingredients into here and then we'll roll it up in some tortillas here in just a little bit, but it goes pretty quickly. Next, I gotta grab my sour cream out of the fridge. So I'm gonna grab some sour cream. We're just gonna throw, I don't know, half a cup to a cup of sour cream in there. I just kind of eyeball it. I don't really have a specific recipe that I follow as far as measurement. Just whatever looks good for me, I put it in there. Okay, then all of this is just gonna go into my KitchenAid so that it can do the mixing for me. So I don't want to do a whole lot of it. And this makes dinner more hands-off for me. So I'm gonna turn that on, let that go for a little bit, and then we'll come right back to it. And when it's done, it should look something like that when it's all done. And I'm just going to push this guy back here, set that there. You can hear the little one screaming in the back here, but if you're a mama, you know how that goes. So let's get started on filling these tortillas. And really, this has only taken me so far, maybe a matter of maybe five minutes so far. I'm going to grab some tortillas. Let me scooch it back a little bit more so you can see a little bit better. And I'm just going to fill this and put it in here. That's really all I'm doing. I should probably spray the bottom of this pan really quickly. There we go. So that they don't stick later. Usually they don't, but because I'm going to be putting it in the fridge to wait until later on, then I'm going to go ahead and spray. So really we're just going to add some filling to this. I'm going to get it shaped into kind of a roll like so. It looks like this. And then I'm just going to set that right inside this pan. And I'm just going to repeat that process until the pan is completely full. Now, if I have any, if I have any that's left over, I will use these same tortillas and I'll do the exact same thing that I'm doing right now. But instead of putting it in here in this to go ahead and cook, I will put it in a plastic Ziploc bag, like a freezer bag, and I will throw those in the freezer rolled up just like this. And they work phenomenally to be able to just throw in the microwave and use them for, oh, I think I'm running out of tortillas here. Use them for a quick snack just like this. You could just eat it just like this as a tortilla and with this stuff in it. Or what I like to do is I'll put a little bit of avocado oil or a little bit of oil in a pan and I'll just kind of get it crispy on all sides. I need more tortillas. I'll get it crispy on all sides and then I'll just throw that with some sour cream and salsa and that makes an amazing snack as well. So let me grab a few more tortillas out of the fridge here. There we go. Here we go. Now it looks like I will be having some extra now that I can see 
where I'm at. So this guy is completely full right here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna throw this guy, I'm gonna wrap it, put saran wrap on the top and I'm gonna throw that in the fridge so that later the only thing that I have to do is just make the sauce, put it on top, throw some cheese on it and throw it in the oven. And that'll be super easy to do. And then I plan on just using the Instant Pot to make some kind of Spanish rice to go with it. And that'll make a super easy dinner for tonight. All right, we still have some time before the bread is done and I ran out of tortillas. So what I need to do now is get the cheese ready. Yes, I know for the kids' snacks for after school. So cheese with crackers and some grapes is what I would like to have for snacks for the kids when I get home from school to hold them over until it's dinner time. So if I leave this the way that it is like this in the refrigerator and I leave crackers in the pantry as they are, my children will never ever think to put those together and have a snack. So <laughs> the best way for me to get that eaten and used is to go ahead and cut everything myself and have it ready to go in the fridge for the kids. So we're going to take a few minutes to cut up some cheese and we're going to throw it into this container. That way the cheese is set and ready to go. All right, let's get some grapes ready to go with that. These have been rinsed off, washed off, whatever you want to say. Put those in here and I have another batch to go wash. So I'm going to go wash another batch, put that in there, and that will be the grapes ready to go with it. Apparently the kids went through the other batch quicker than I thought they would, which is okay. That's what's left of those ones. Makes me happy because it means that they are eating them. So I'd rather they eat them than them go bad. So I'm going to put this in the fridge as well. So the cheese, I'll put some crackers. These are the grapes. This will be their snack for when they get home from school to kind of hold them over a little bit until dinner's done, which I try to have dinner done fairly closely to when they get home. So I'm going to get some honeydew melon. These were on sale this week for $3 each. So I picked up four for this week. Two honeydew melon and two cantaloupe. So I'm going to go ahead and get these cut up. And we'll put them in this container here. The rinds and the seeds will go in here and that will go to the chickens. So let's get started. On this honeydew melon. I find that if I cut the fruit up ahead of time and put them in containers like this, they tend to get eaten a lot more and quicker with my kids if they can just see it already done, grab it, and go. The bread is finally done and out of the oven, and the cantaloupe is cut up as well. Here's a quick recap on what we did for this week in order to kind of reset ourselves and reset our fridge to accommodate everybody in and out and snacks and so forth. So for snacks for the kids, I have cut up some cheese right here to go along with some crackers. And then underneath that, I have prepped some grapes. Let me see if I can move this out the way here. I have prepped some grapes that are all set and ready to go. That'll go into the fridge and they can munch on that and or some banana bread that is gonna be available as well. For fruit, we have cantaloupe here. We have some honeydew melon that I cut up right there. And then we also, in the freezer, or excuse me, in the fridge, we also have the, um, I did 
I think it was eight pounds of these oranges and then we still have these cuties that need to be used up as well so i don't know about you guys but we're still coming out of winter time and trying to head into spring that means that vitamin c is needed absolutely in our home right now because my kids go to school and it's like a petri dish over there and they bring everything home so anywho we do have some banana bread here to munch on as we go i did prep dinner for tonight this is just a pre-prep those are all filled with the chicken. I'm gonna put the sauce on those later on. And then in the instant pot, I will do some rice to go along with that. And then as you saw in the refrigerator, we have some avocados. So I will throw some lettuce and some avocado cheese will go on this. Um, and they'll have some tomatoes and whatnot to go on top of those enchiladas. I had enough to make up this little batch right here of the same thing. Now I can put this in the freezer and use this to make that same dish later or you can just take them out individually and warm them up in the microwave for about 30 seconds to a minute or so and that makes a good kind of like um like a mini burrito in a way or you can put them on a pan with a little bit of olive oil or avocado oil and then make it nice and crispy on the outside and then my kids like to eat that with sour cream and salsa as kind of like um what do you call those um like a taquito kind of a thing so either way you work it that works out just fine and then earlier today we did a pot of soup as you can see that's still sitting right here i said i had a kiddo that was sick and she is on the mend now but she is still home from school so we did make some homemade chicken soup right here i did an entire chicken yesterday last night before going to bed we did an entire chicken in the instant pot along with some scraps of onion and celery and carrots and that made the stock for today's soup all i had to do was just throw it in there add some water some salt and those veggie scraps put it on for about an hour and then that made it available for me today to do a quick chicken soup there we do still have our <laughs> Looks like our little guy left a little spatula there underneath the stool but um we still do have our bread is still baking right now as you can see it's in there it's going it's not done yet but that will be our white bread for today so or this week so that'll go in one of these guys right here technically this guy which is an apple one i always have one on the countertop for anybody to munch on as they want usually goes inside the second one why this one's still sitting in the bag i don't know that's just mom life things just happen and should be in there but it's in here but as you can see that'll get us a good start a good prep for this week and then i will continue to share with you as we go through the week the rest of our meals and so forth this is what the spanish rice looked like after it was done cooking in the instant pot and so i just put about two or three cups of rice and then two or three cups of water or chicken broth in there a little bit of salsa a little bit of tomato sauce some salt and then mixed it up and this is what the enchiladas looked like when they were done